Hey guys, Digitech Lifestyle here, back with another video. Today, I'm just gonna um, do some clips, uh, three clips from uh, Resex RP. Uh, one is to bit some uh, Bitcoin maxis. Uh, people need to listen to what uh, Charles Huskinson says. Um, he has, I think, three clips, um, not just about Bitcoin maxis, but the third clip in particular, re people really, really, really need to pay attention to, especially on the CBDCs. Uh, um, I also, I'm gonna, um, I will um, also play you a video from Redacted when it comes regards our CBDCs. Before I do that, I think I'll go play you the, the um, get the CBDC one from Redacted because I think that's important for people to listen to as well. Hold on. Going to see a massive cyber attack hitting before the year 2025. Pointing out, you know, in, in great detail, yeah, like this is going to happen, so you better be prepared for it. Why are they saying this and who are they going to try to point the finger at? Right. So this was said at the WEF annual meeting earlier this year in January by uh, the WEF managing director, Jeremy Jurgens. And uh, Jurgens, as well as the WEF itself, has been involved in a series of simulations for several years now that I'm sure a lot of people in your audience are familiar with, uh, called Cyber Polygon, which has been directly affiliated with uh, Russia's government, as well as some of Russia's biggest banks and some of the biggest commercial banks um, in the world, and also backed by a lot of uh, U.S. federal agencies, which is ironic when you consider, you know, all the about alleged, alleged Russian hacks over the years. They're very willing under the guise of the WEF to uh, collaborate with the, you know, supposed hackers um, responsible for everything bad, you know, for se several years ago. Um, so that's quite revealing. Um, but aside from Cyber Polygon, there's a lot that the WEF seeks to accomplish um, as it relates to the cyber realm. And they've been collaborating in a lot of ways with these same ba big banks and also American intelligence agencies in unprecedented ways that has not really gotten any coverage over the past several years. And a lot of this is housed within a public-private partnership the WEF manages called the World Economic Forum Partnership Against Cybercrime. And uh, these, uh, this particular organization, uh, back a, a few years ago, gamed out with the Carnegie Endowment um, along with the Federal Reserve, the Bank of England, the European Central Bank, so some of the biggest central banks in the world, as well as some of the biggest commerce in the world, like Bank of America and JP Morgan, um, how essentially the US financial system was due to be uh, the victim of a massive cyber attack. And if you're familiar with how things have been going in the US financial or banking system recently, uh, things are not in a very good state at all. And regardless of if in, you know, if there would be or will be a cyber attack in the near future, um, the banking and financial system in the in the United States is in uh, deep doo doo, right? So, right. Uh, if you're the big banks and the intelligence agencies, you want to avoid what happened after the 2008 economic crisis, where there was unprecedented anger at Wall Street because the whole hope and change Obama uh, psyop essentially is probably not going to work again. So. How do you allow that collapse to happen? Because it has to happen in such a way that the banks and the government are essentially blameless. Well, have a cyber attack happen and you can literally blame any, any nation state or group uh, for that hack. And we know this because of what WikiLeaks published right before Julian Assange was completely silenced and then later uh, arrested and dragged out of the Ecuadorian embassy in London, uh, Vault 7. Uh, which revealed things like the Umbridge program, among other things, that U.S. intelligence and other intelligence agencies that are affiliated with this WEF partnership against cybercrime have the ability uh, to place the fingerprints of any nation state actor they wish, including Russia, China, Iran, and really North Korea, any other group uh, as well, uh, not just nation states, put their fingerprints in a hack they actually commit themselves. And this is very significant because this offers, you know, these intelligence agencies unprecedented ability to have uh, to conduct false flag operations in the cyber realm and uh, this group specifically has a lot of solutions aside from you know things with the banking system that they cannot really justify implementing unless there is some sort of large cyber attack so what does the WEF partnership against cybercrime want 
Um, they're very open that they want a regulated internet and they're essentially seeking a policy that was uh, efforts were made to implement during the Obama administration in the US. They called it a driver's license for the internet. Um, so essentially what this um, public private, private partnership that the WEF is pushing for it is for every person's access to the internet to be tied to a digital ID uh, or a government issued ID, but presumably a digital ID just because of where government issued ID programs are all uh, going essentially around the world. And the goal of that, of course, if you're ID is linked to your internet access. Uh, intelligence agencies know exactly what media you are consuming uh, in terms of you know, what you read and also what you post online. And that has been the goal for a very, very long time. Um, so it, people aren't necessarily going to consent to that unless uh, they are made to believe that anonymity and privacy online are dangerous. Some sort of event where anonymous hackers um, do something online that causes major disruption globally and then the consent can be manufactured through fear and panic as, as is often done uh, that anonymity and privacy needs to be eliminated that we need to know exactly who is doing what online to prevent a calamity of that scale from ever happening again and this is the exact solution that these guys have been cooking for a very long time and the intelligence agencies involved are Israeli intelligence, British intelligence, and then the U.S. Secret Service, uh, FBI, and Department of Justice. And you have several of the biggest uh, banks in the country, like Bank of America, um, involved directly with this group, as well as major U.S. tech companies like Microsoft and Amazon uh, partnered with all of this. And uh, this is exactly what they're seeking, and they have all the tools to allow something like this. Uh, to happen and when you have the fact that some of these actors want a, re a, a war where the US for example goes to war with Iran I'm going to stop that there you guys can go and watch this yourself and they're redacted um, as you can see by the title but the, the reason preface for that is because this is where the CBDC is going to come into play this is what I think anyway so uh, let's go and get that up and I'm going to play you, out, play you um, Charles Hoskins um, Bitcoin Maxi's video, uh, uh, the three uh, clips from him, uh, is it, uh, is it a message to Bit all Bitcoin Maxis from Charles Hoskinson. The reason Satoshi stayed anonymous by his own admission was the legal ambiguity of issuing a currency. In the United States, things like Liberty Dollar and a lot of people who had attempted like the Ron Paul dollars, for example, the silver coins that were minted back in 2008. Uh, they didn't fare so well and it is an ambiguous thing when somebody creates a digital asset and distributes that digital asset and the unescapable reality that the Bitcoin maximalists cannot accept but they just they believe it's immaculate conception is that on day one Satoshi had 100% of the hash power and complete and absolute control of the Bitcoin network there was no notion of a fair launch there couldn't have been. No one had the technical sophistication, as evidenced by the fact that it took Hal Finney, a deeply technical person, multiple tries to get a Bitcoin note working properly and sending transactions. So, at least some of the Bitcoin issued through the mining process were done in a completely centralized way because only one actor mined them and had complete control over the network. And at any given time, could have made arbitrary decisions to change that network in any way. Now they say, well, hang on a second here. It's now decentralized and Bitcoin is a broad protocol. And there's many people and there's many different actors and no one person has that kind of influence over the system. That's a true statement. So then why is it the case that every single coin in the altcoin space, if they like to call us that, the altcoin space, that has those same facts and circumstances is always a security, always centralized, always a shit coin, always a scam. Bitcoin's changed a lot. It went from a collegial environment where people were having fun and it's cool and interesting and we'd all go to Bitcoin talk and talk about our projects and various things to almost a cult where a group of people say a bunch of things. One is that everything but Bitcoin is a scam to criminalize altcoins. That's a fact. 
I know that for a fact. I've spoken with staff of lawmaker. Sorry. I'm told repeatedly that we just need to all get along. And you have to really ask yourself if one group of people are saying, let's work together. And another group of people are saying that group of people are evil, stupid criminals whose only purpose is to defraud others. How exactly do we have a copacetic working relationship? And why would we want to work with that group of people? Why would we wake up every day and say, those are our people too? Let's be very clear. There are companies and members of the Bitcoin space that have actively lobbied Congress and the US federal government to criminalize altcoins. That's a fact. I know that for a fact. I've spoken with staff of lawmakers who that same day spoke to members of the Bitcoin community, prominent influencers who literally just had a meeting where they were told everything but Bitcoin should be made illegal in the United States. And yet we're told, let's just all get along. There's no way to get along. Well, no, not with that um, behind. Um, but let me play you the last um, one from Charles Hoskinson. What's the point of your own life? What type of world do you want? This is where he talks about CBDCs, guys. And I think this is extremely important. Um, I didn't really have much to say about um, the battle between Bitcoin maxes and non-Bitcoin maxes and your coins. And I understand that there's been, I understand where Charles Foskin is coming from when they're, they're attacking uh, all the other cryptocurrencies on the market and not uh, give them a fair chance. Uh, but there is some on the market that don't need to be there. There's quite a lot of them that are on the market that don't need to be there. There's, we don't need that many of these cases. We don't have that many of cases unless they're going to be formulated somehow. Um, but uh, a lot of the tokens out there are crap. Uh, and and I, I understand where Cardano's coming from. They're, made, they're building up a use case. And that's where the point he was making with, with regards to Bitcoin maxis, as I understand it. Right, um, let me play you this one here and finish this one off. I live in. Where do you want to live? When is it too far? When are you in the pot being boiled? We are so close to CBDCs. We are so close to AI being integrated with CBDCs and social credit becoming a universal concern. We are so close as a society to you going to a gas station and trying to buy some gas and saying, sorry, you've already filled your tank this week. You can't do it again. Sorry, you've already bought this thing. You can't buy anymore. Sorry, you belong to the wrong group of people. You're not allowed to buy that. Sorry, you pay a different price than this other group of people because um, you're in a different part of the grievance hierarchy. It's not a hypothetical thing. They write papers about this. They talk about it. Old Klaus says you'll own nothing and be happy. They say this is the only way to prevent a climate catastrophe. They say this is the only way to run the world moving forward. And we have whole nation states like China pursuing it and giving us paint by numbers reality for that. The very same people doing that people writing policy papers about how the United States needs to do it and creating a step-by-step -step guide to do that. And that is something that's going to happen in the next 10 or 20 years if we're not careful. I'm old enough to remember how two weeks to slow the spread became papers, please. And we had to show vaccine cards to go into Starbucks. Remember when people said such a thing would never come to pass in the United States, but it did. It's fragile freedom. And technology's gotten too good. Globalization has gotten too pervasive. And corporations have gotten too big. Governments have become too esoteric and unaccountable. And the bureaucracy of governments is more powerful than any elected official. That's a universal truth for most modern society. The social contract upon which modern constitutional republics have been founded 
and democracy has been founded is becoming unraveled and it needs to be renegotiated and reestablished. The whole point of the blockchain and cryptocurrency industry, every single one of us is to establish a new social contract where our liberty is preserved and protected and we do not live under a technocratic tyranny. That is the point. That is the reason labors exist. That is who we are. And a lot of good people go to work every single day to try to preserve and protect that. They're not criminals. They're not evil people. They're not shit coiners. They're not here to steal from you. They're here to try to make the world a better place. I agree with that. Not all coins are shit coins. And respect for for what he's actually saying and we are very close to the point of um di digital um ids being um uh, something that we have no choice in um i and i honestly believe we need to wake up seriously anyway i'm gonna finish off with elon musk and i'm gonna um yeah finish off with what he what he said really and it is a repeat of some of what he said but there is a bit more to what he said as well and i think people need to understand this as well um he is basically saying that you cannot be or won't be controlled in a sense if that's the case so be it but also he's done more for those who have um, wanted to save the planet than anybody else i i find it questionable because of the way the batteries are still being uh, manuf uh not necessarily yeah manufactured and how how that how that whole um, thing's going but you know what it's it's what it is for now and maybe there will be new tech technology coming to, to help solve that and, and you're clarifying this now um, but there's a public perception that that was part of a apology tour, if you will. That would, this had been said online. There was all of the criticism. There was advertisers leaving. We talked to Bob Iger today. I hope today. they stop. You hope? Uh, don't advertise. You don't want them to advertise? No. What do you mean? If, if somebody's going to try to blackmail me with advertising, blackmail me with money, go fuck yourself. But... Go fuck yourself. Is that clear? I hope it is. Hey, Bob, if you're in the audience. Well, well let me ask you then. That's how I feel. Don't about, advertise. How do you think then about the economics of, of X? If, 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 if part of the underlying model, at least today, and maybe it needs to shift, maybe the answer is it needs to shift away from advertising. Um, if, if you believe that this is the one part of your business where you will be beholden to those who uh, have this view, G what do you do? F Y. I, I understand that, but there's a reality too, <laughs> right? Yes. No. No. It, it, I, I mean, Linda no, Yaccarino is right here, and she's uh, got to sell uh, advertising. Uh, absolutely. So, um, no. No. Totally. So. So. No. No. Actually, what what this advertising boycott is uh, is is going to do? It's it's going to kill the company. And do you think that the I, but and the whole world will know that those advertisers killed the company, and we will document it in great detail. But there are those advertisers. I imagine are going to say. They're going to say we didn't kill the company. Oh yeah. They're going to say tell it to tell it to Earth. But they're going to say that they're going to say Elon that you killed the company because you said these things, and that they were inappropriate things, and that they didn't feel comfortable on the platform. Right. Let's that's see. that's and, what and they're going to say. And let's see how Earth responds to that. So yeah, okay. This then this goes back to we'll, the, we'll both make our cases, right? And we'll see what the outcome is. What are the economics of that for you? I mean, you, you have enormous resources, so you can actually keep this company going for a very long time. Would you keep it going for a long time if there was no advertising? I mean, if the company fails because of an advertised boycott, it will fail because of an advertised boycott. And that will be what bankrupted the company, and that's what everybody on Earth will know. What do you think, then, of the... I guess this goes back to the idea of trust, though. Then it'll I, be gone. And it'll be gone because of an advertised boycott. 
But but you recognize that some of those people are going to say that they didn't feel comfortable on the platform. And I, I, wonder, I just wonder and ask you and think about that for Tell a second. Tell it to the judge. But the, but the judge is going to be... The uh, judge is the public. And you think that the public is going to say that, that Disney is making a mistake? Yes. And they're going to boycott Disney? They already are. Well, there are, there are some that are for, for, for lots of different reasons, but you think that this is going to, that you have the, this goes to actually the interesting of, 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 of power and leverage. Let the chips fall where they may. Let the chips fall where they may. Can I ask why, why that is the approach? And I, I ask it because you've been What's very- What's approach? Well, you've been very particular about the, I mean, the approach to Tesla. Uh, when you think about the engineering involved in that, the approach to SpaceX, the approach to um, some of the stuff you're doing with with AI has been very specific, right? There's not a let, let the chips fall where they may approach to those businesses, I don't think. No, we focus on making the best products. And, and, and Tesla has gotten to where it's gotten with no advertising at all. I understand that. Tesla currently sells uh, two, twice as much uh, in terms of electric vehicles as the rest of electric car makers in, in the United States combined. Tesla has done more to help the environment than uh, all other companies combined. Uh, it would be fair to say that, therefore, as a leader of the company, I've done more for the environment than everyone else, any, any single human on Earth. How do you feel about that? No, no, I, no, how do I feel about that? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm asking you personally how you feel about that, because this goes, we're talking about power and influence and... I'm, and saying, I'm saying what I, what, what I care about is the, the reality of goodness, not the perception of it. And what I see all over the place is people who care about looking good while doing evil. Fuck them. Okay? I'm so glad I was able to find that clip um, by um, his XRP person. Listen, what he said at the end, especially uh, Elon Musk, is so true. And if you like this kind of stuff, uh, please uh, like and subscribe. Listen, guys, the world, the CBDCs, the. the, the the, um, the, the plans that they have in mind it's up to us you know. we are the many they are the few we need, we need to remember that and by him talking like that he's put, he's put a target on his back at the same time right? he's put a target on his back but at the same time things can change if we want it to change it's up to us you know not up to them make a choice make a decision Anyway, do check out style out, take care of yourself.